Hello, St. Anne's Online and whoever else is joining us. Um, I'm Meg Rhodes and I'm for us. So um, first and foremost, I have Sandra here who has graciously accepted t the role of teaching me um, and God bless her for that. Um, how to make eggplant rosaries and she's going to lead us through that today. So Sandra, I'll kick it off to you. Okay. Hello. Hello. Uh, let me scoot this back so I can show you my workstation. We are going to make Anglican rosaries. I've done this with children as young as six in a Sunday school setting before. They can be. But she's as never done it with Meg. Like. I, oh. So, oh. <laughs> so six is one thing, Meg is another. Meg is another. I guarantee you that you can do this, Meg. The main thing, as with any project, is having the correct tools and the right supplies. Now, if you already know how to bead, if you already make jewelry, then all you need to know is the design, because you'll be able to come up with, with ideas on your own. So as I said, th these can be as fancy as you like or as simple as you like. And we're going to start with a simple design today. I mean, uh, the design is the same no matter what. But we're going to start with the, the easiest way that uses the simplest materials. You won't even, you'll need a pair of scissors. That's pretty much it. So this is a, a fancier one that I did. You can see that the cross is kind of wire wrapped here. Um, but the technique, oh, and I did this one yesterday just because I'm into learning about leather tassels right now. So see the cross at the bottom. I will be happy to do lessons on those at a later date. You can also make them tiny if you want to slip one in your pocket and carry it around with you. But but you're not going you anywhere use... because we are staying in home right now. So. That's true. However, I have to walk the dog around the pond and sometimes I true. pray when I do that. That is a good place um, to pray. Um... <laughs> you can also use fancy beads. I've known people that use um, like birthstones for them, their, their month's birthstones. This one happens to be Jasper and Czech glass. Also a good idea for people is if you have a treasured crucifix in your family, like something that belonged to your grandmother that you never wear anymore, this is a really good way to repurpose beads and jewelry. Ooh, I love so that idea. this is what we're doing today. So you'll see there's a cross on the bottom and then this is the inventory bead. These are the station beads. I think Mother Meg refers to them as the cruciform beads. And then you have seven beads, four of them representing the weeks, and it's all done on a cord. So what do you need? First of all, you want something to keep your project supplies in. I use um, a little glass ramekin you could use a little plastic tub, a shoe box. If you're working with kids though, or with more than one or two people, that's important. You're also gonna want a surface on which to work. I happen to have a bead mat that I'm going to work, work from. But what I have found with kids, baking sheets are great. Take a baking sheet and just line it with a with a kitchen towel or something, and then the beads aren't gonna roll away and bounce all over the floor. Oh, that's a good idea. Here is your terms of supply. So you need a total of 33 beads. You want 28 of one kind, four a little larger, those are your cruciform beads, and one a little distinctive. That's your inventory bead. You want I find that wax cotton cord or leather lace works best. I had originally thought 30 inches, but when I did this yesterday with a neighbor girl, we decided that was really excessive, especially if you're trying to um, conserve your supplies. Um, as I said, you can make these as fancy or as simple as you like. You can get plastic beads from Hobby Lobby online for a dollar a hundred almost. Um, and I, I will show you some resources later. Um, waxed cotton cord. I, I don't have the, the tops of these packages, but that's what it's called, waxed cotton cord. You want a diameter less than one millimeter because that will fit inside most of your beads. And that's the most critical element. I'll, I'll yeah. talk about that again in a minute. 
This is also very good. And I got this from Hobby Lobby for $3.99. And that's a lot of leather lace. Hmm. And um, you, there's even a website on there, realleather.com. But this is waxed thread for 25 yards on this spool. So that's nice. pretty a pretty good value. And the one thing so that I, will... I chose, I chose this. Before you start, whatever beads you're using, you want to make sure that your cord will go through the holes in your beads. Check it on all of your beads to make sure. And on some of the beads, on two of the beads, or three of the beads, you're going to have to be able to go through both directions. So it, the hole has to be big enough for two, for the cord to go through twice. And the reason I suggest that is because you don't want to get everybody all excited about making these and then suddenly they find out that their beads won't work. Yeah. The simplest way to prevent that is get some of these cheap beads that have these huge holes. Those pony beads? Uh, yeah, I think some places call them pony beads. The other thing that um, I will say is, and this is what I did, seeing how we're all cooped up. Um, if you go onto Michael's and you use their app or you just go online and do it, um, you can order it, pay for it and everything, and then they will send you a check and say your stuff is ready and you just go and they drop it off in your car for you. So that's what yes. I did. Yes. And, and as I said, I have a list of resources I'll show at the end. I really like these as well. Bead, bead Design Company. Hobby Lobby has them. I don't know if Michaels does, but they have collections of beads in a, in a box. Um, multicolor and um, they come in all different mixes so you can get them in turquoise you can get them looking like seashells all kinds of resources out there when you start looking okay so are you ready Meg let's do it let's what could possibly go wrong okay so you should have 25 to 30 inches of your wax very generous cotton cord okay so the first thing you want to do is go through the loop at the top of your cross. Pull your cord together at the ends and make sure your cross is right there. This is going to be great for somebody with an ass. I can't wait. Get your assistant to help. And if I just lay it down there, you can see. You want the cross. My problem is um, just the, um, what is that, geometry? Spatial reasoning is my problem. Hmm. Yeah. Sorry, I have um, an assistant who is hiding off the camera. But it's also okay. creating one. So she's, but it's fine. I'm going to get my revenge. I'm going to make her tie knots for me when I need to tie knots. Well, that's what comes yeah. next. Yes. You're going to tie three knots. Yeah. So at the top of your cross, just simply wrap it around your finger and pull the cord through. Oh, did you see that assistant? We're gonna need that done again. Want me to do it again? Yes. Okay. So you've got your cross on the end of your cord. On the end of my cord or in the middle? Well, it's in the middle, I'm sorry, yeah. Okay, okay. In the All middle. Right. And you've got your two ends of the cord here. So you're right in the middle. So now you're going to take the cord and just wrap it around a finger, both of it. I mean, the whole thing, both sides. And then pull through. There's a name for this. I don't know what this knot is called. 
It's just a simple knot. Okay. All right. I think I got it. Yes. Oh, wait, and then just pull it down it. as close to the top of the cross as you like. Ooh, mine's at the very, very end. Hold on. Hold on. Sandra, you said six-year-olds, but you didn't say Meg. You've done this with me. Is your cord nice and stiff and easy to use? Yes. Uh, oh, oh, I did it. I did it. I'm a winner. This is as complicated okay. as it gets, right, Sandra? Would you like me to do yours, assistant? I can help. Oh, now you get to hear my dogs bark, too. Okay, now separate, separate your cords. And remember I said you have to make sure your bead hole is large enough. Yes. You're gonna take, take your bead. This is your inventory bead. And one cord goes through one direction and the other side goes through the other direction. All right, so got this. One goes in one direction. And the other goes in the other direction. There you, go. there you go. Good, Good job. job. Pull it on down to the top of that knot. Make sure it's even. You can play with your cord until you get it where you want it to be. Does it look like that? Uh, a, a rough interpretation of that, but yes. Okay. Now you're going to do the same knot again. Bring your cord together above the bead. So you've got your two strands of cord. And you're going to do that knot again. The one that we did above the cross. Wrap both pieces, wrap both pieces around your finger. Pull it through. And pull the knot down until it's right on top of that bead. brothers and sisters online when she says get cotton cord she is correct because I have like a plastic cord and my knots don't like to stick yeah you want yeah. waxed cotton cord is the easiest to use yeah so. or that leather lace that I showed you the stiffer the better and you don't want it too thick All right, we 
got that one. All right, good? Good. Yep. Now take your first cruciform bead, and you have to put both pieces of cord, both strings of cord through it. At the same time, not crossing them At like At the we did same last time, one. not different directions, the same direction. Okay. Split ways. Now, well, you're going to do one more knot. One more knot. All right. Remember, take your cord, put it around one finger, bring it through, and bring the knot down as close to that first cruciform bead as you can. So it'll be right on top of the cruciform bead. I didn't get that as tight as I should have. And now the fun now begins. The fun begins. So, separate, so separate, and then you just then start, you start stringing. stringing. Okay. So you saw how I had it laid out. Just start on one side with your seven beads. And I would, teaching it to children, and so I guess to Meg, I would yes. do each side at a time. You keep so as I'm working as on the right side of my cord right now. I'm going to put on my my seven beads. And then a cruciform bead. This is what we have so far. Perfect. Now I'm going to take my left side. Another benefit to doing it this way with children is, um, especially young ones, they won't mess up their beads or their counting. They'll be able to, to see that each side, that the sides match. Even. All right, IT guys, so do we want Meg to complete one, even though it's going to take like 24 hours to get the video done? Okay, okay. So, so this is where I am so far. Does the tech guy help? Yeah, I was going to say, can tech guy? So now, and you don't need to tie any knots in this process, not until we get to the end. Okay. So now I'm going back to the right side and I'm going to string on another seven beads. Brothers and sisters, you may. Now, don't put that cruciform bead on yet. So, I've got another seven beads here. Now, I'm going to put okay. the other seven on the left one. side. Okay. My first set. What number are we on over there? Do we need some uh, more? can act like I'm doing my own job here. Ah. 
I don't do anything for myself. And see, we're almost see, done. We're almost done. Oh, so the other seven. I recommend you get yourself some kids and make them do this. Mine are in the basement playing with Legos. But next time, they'll be put to work. Okay. Okay. I can explain I can now how to finish how this, this off, off because it's the because same thing that you did, did with the inventory bead, bead at the bottom. Okay. So here's my last cruciform bead, and I'm going to take one cord and go through the whole one direction, and the other cord and go through the hole in the other direction. Okay. So we're going to double it. So it winds up uh, when I pull it, pull it like that. Like that. Okay. Difficult beads is what you got. I know, but they're so cute. Yeah. That needs seven more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, well, the IT guy is doing that. Joe says the wrong kind of cord. Okay. Using these. Okay, now we have to wait for this one. Yeah, so I have to get seven over here before. When you get to this point, you can tie the, the final knot however you like. You can tie it like you're tying your shoes. You could make a fancy bow, um, whatever you want to do. I'm just going to tie it in an overhand knot a couple of times. I'm just going to sit over here and drink my coffee, which is, you know, how I live my life. I do that well. Beads. And then, there we are. Those are too small. Okay. Yay. That looks amazing. Mine, um, well, it doesn't look quite like that, but it, it it's going to be done soon. But I can tell you how to pray one. So should we? Do? Okay. Now you need the green one. Yes, let's yeah. let's pray one and then I'll I'll review the tips and tricks and, and show my okay. resources again. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about um how to pray. Like I said, um there are lots of different choices. Oh, and you get to see how much I talk with my hands. Hold on. IT guy is gonna move the camera so that I have a face. Um then we'll go from there. Oh look, you can see the the very corners of I feel like Julia Child or Martha Stewart when they like do these shows and they're like, here's how you do it. And then they make somebody else do it. And I talk about it. <laughs> they don't complain That's about the helper, right? That's me. Save the level. Um, okay. So here's a prayer book. Um, what I would really recommend is choosing the prayers that speak most to you. Um, when you're doing this and we're all going to have specific prayers especially right now when things are all kind of crazy and weird and things like that so um, I'll give you some examples of some of my favorites and one um, that you probably have heard me pray quite a bit um, and and that's the all shall be well and all shall be well and all manner of things shall be well and another one um, that I like is the serenity prayer so Lord grant me the serenity to change the things that I can, to, um, to Lord grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change, yes. the courage to change the things I can, things and the wisdom can. to know the difference. I said That's that right. every day in the principal's office. <laughs> you know, the principal's office and the counselor's office are very similar. The office too. Prayer is alive and well in schools. Yes, yes, it is. It is. You just may not hear us do it. Um, so, um, I thought we could, um, use 
some of those prayers. And like I said, when you're going through this, you're going to have um, the first prayer that you're going to do. Oh, and look, someone will, is soon going to be finished with, oh, with yes. oh, look, conveniently, Martha Stewart has. Oh, I can't wait to see. I know. Martha Stewart is going to take credit for what has been happening behind the scenes. Um, here's mine. I like cutesy, shiny things and, and pink fun things. So here's mine. That's beautiful. I know, right? I, I worked so hard on this, Sandra. I'm truly gifted at, at beating. You did a great job. Right? I know. You have a lovely okay, so, assistant. I do have a lovely assistant. She's a pretty good mother, too. Um, so when, when I would pray mine, um, I would start with... Um, with the cross at the bottom. Um, and I would start with glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Um, and my invitatory would probably be all shall be well, and all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. And then my cruciform beads, I would use the Lord's Prayer. So, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And then for my um, wheat beads, which um, are meant to model the days of the week and the days of creation, um, so as, as you heard, we have seven of them, um, that's probably when I would do this serenity prayer. Um, another one that I really, really like, and you'll find it in the prayer book, is um, the prayer of St. Francis. Um, and if I had that conveniently open, I, I would pray that for you because it's a beautiful prayer and I highly recommend it. Um, but let's start with the certain prayer. Um, Lord, grant me the... Hold on, Sandra knows it better than I do. Grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. The courage the to courage change, the things, change the, things the things I can. And the, and the wisdom, wisdom to, know the to know the difference. And then again, I would do the Lord's Prayer. Um, and then yet again, I would do the Serenity Prayer for myself. And the Lord's Prayer. And the Serenity Prayer. The Lord's Prayer. The Serenity Prayer again. And then one last time, you would do the Lord's Prayer. And then you've come all the way around. And you do your inventory, invitatory prayer, which is now your conclusion prayer. Um, so remember, I did... Um, all shall be well, and all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. And then my crucif crucifix, or in my case, because um, I don't like little dead bodies hanging on crosses, um, because Christ was resurrected, not just dead. So mine doesn't have a little body on it. Um, glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Um, but what I really recommend is that you think about for yourself, what are prayers that help you? Um, and like Sandra said, you could have this in your pocket. You could pray it um, as you are walking the dog. You could pray this before you go to bed. But I think for many of us, having a tactile thing to hold and, and to acknowledge as we're praying around it can be very, very useful. And I think the circle of prayer is a very useful reminder that um, we do all things in kind of the circle and the cycle. So, For those people that have Episcopal prayer books at home, there is a whole section of prayers. Do you, do you have that in front of you? What page that starts on? Um, yeah, let me pull it back here. I mean, there, there are prayers for everything. There are prayers for everything. This would also be appropriate with Psalms, would it not? I, this would be beautiful with Psalms, yes. And there's some collects. I highly recommend that you take some time to go through our collects because we do have some beautiful collects. Ah, oh, you would think that I wouldn't have these better together than I do. There's my prayer saying prayer. While you're looking for that, let me remind everybody again. You need the cross, I guess, is the most important. Cross charm, 33 beads, 
28 need to be the same for a little larger, an inventory bead, and then you want 25 to 30 inches of waxed cotton or leather lace. And remember, if you're an experienced beater and you know what jump rings and terminators and silicon cord and collapsible needles are, of course you can do that as well. As well. I'll give okay. you a hint. The, this is a, a, a list of simple resources. You can buy from Michaels and Hobby Lobby online. Fire Mountain Gems is one of my favorite websites. I get a package from them frequently. Artbeads.com is another really good resource. If, if you're looking for something um, fancy, then Dakota Stones. And one of the benefits of Dakota Stones is all of their stones are consistent in color and they are drilled well. You will find that the cheaper the beads, the less consistent the holes are going to be which means that your cord might fit through one and not through another because the, the holes are different sizes. Which I ran Jewelry into. Television is one of my favorite things and they have a whole section called Jewel School. If you really want to support a small business, my favorite is White Fox Bead Studio. It's a small independent studio in Knoxville. I have gone there for classes. The owner, Gail DeLuca, is a friend of mine and might give you a discount if you say you're shopping and you know Sandra from Kansas City. So I just wanted to give her a plug. She's a lovely lady. It's a small store. And then, of course, she's struggling a little bit now. Or just Google. You will find tons of things on Etsy and eBay. It doesn't have to be expensive, as I pointed out. Um, I One caveat, you want to make sure, as I said at the beginning, that you have an appropriate workspace. If you don't have a, a good mat and an area to work from, you're going to lose materials. Um, there, you'll find things on the floor. Um, it also makes it easier for kids. The younger the kids are, the more preparation you need to do. And shy away from pearls, unless it specifically says it's a large hole pearl. Pearls have the smallest um, millimeter holes of any bead I've ever worked with, and you need really fine wire, so don't, don't use pearls. But plastic pony beads, and I did, I wrote this down from Hobby Lobby. The number is 286-948. You get 85 plastic round beads in assorted colors for 99 cents. So you could make one of these for probably $1.50. Which is awesome. You could make one for other people because um, I know a lot of people would really, really appreciate receiving one of these. I would be happy to make one for other people. Um, I think everybody at church has access to my email address, my phone number. Um, let me know what you want. If you want something um, in yellow um, agate, it might, it might cost something, but if you don't care, just tell me colors. I'll be happy to come up with something. And then if we're ever in church, I can either mail them. If we're ever in church again, I could just have a display um, on the table and everybody can pick one up. And if you want me to do this privately via FaceTime with a phone with your kids, I'd be happy to do that too. And it'll probably go a lot faster than it did with me because you'll be able to beat a little bit um, <laughs> better than I do. I did finally happy to um, do that. find my prayer of St. Francis. So if you're curious about that prayer, that one is on 833 of your prayer book. And um, like I said, I think that's one of my favorites. And it's, Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Amen. So definitely take a look. Um, those prayers, um, like I said, the BCP is full of really, really good prayers. But our prayers for Thanksgiving and prayers in general start on page 814. That one is on page 833, if you're curious about that one. So, anything else, Sandra? I don't think so. This has been a lot of fun. It's this been is so kind of fun. what I'm Thank doing while I'm isolated. isolated. <laughs> and I highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun. Um, and like I said, you can 
as Sandra said, you can go online, you can get all this stuff online and it's delivered straight to your house. So you don't have to worry about contaminating yourself or others by running around and getting things. Um, and thank you so much for doing this with us. I really appreciate it. So much fun. I have, I have quite a collection now as I've been Yay. practicing for this. So, Oh, I should have been practicing. I will be practicing now. <laughs> Well, you didn't have the instructions yet, so. I did not. I didn't know how to do it. Thank you, Sandra, so much. So, you're very welcome.